Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a logging system using Qt. So let's get started. So here I have a sample log file where we have several logs. So we have four logs and in each log we have several entries. So the first entry is the date and time of the log. When was the log uh, created or written to the file? Then we have the type of log, so the severity. So we have debug, info, warning, critical. And then we have the line in the, the line of code that was raised in this log so you know different lines of code and then we have the file so with the file and the line of code you know exactly which which um, where this log come from in your code right and then we have the function name so this line 18 has to be somewhere inside on debug function and then we have the actual message. So in this case, it's just something simple like, hey, debug log, right? Nothing crazy. And notice how every entry I have separated by a pipe. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how we can edit all of this and how we set it up, of course. And so here at the top, I, I made a simple GUI. So when I click any of these buttons, we get a log appended to our logging file. So if I hit debug, here's another one. If I hit critical, here's another one. And then info, here's another one. Now you will notice that there is a fatal button, so there's also a fatal severity. However, fatal works very different, and we'll talk about that at the end and why that's the case. Why does it work different? All right, so let's go look at our code. So first I'm just going to show you the class where I'm doing this button. So it's nothing crazy, I just have five slots. Um, well, I forgot to say slots, but it still works anyways. So I have five slots, right? So I have, when I click on the debug button, info button, warning button, critical button, and then the fatal button. And then of course I have the five uh, signal slots connection. So when you click on any of these buttons, you call the appropriate function. Now you will notice that within each function, I have this macro. This is part of Qt. This is the Qt part of this logging system is that Qt comes with these macros. So there's a Qt debug opening close parentheses, there's a Qt info, Qt warning, Qt critical, and Qt fatal, right? Now notice Qt fatal looks different than the rest, and that's the part that I will talk about at the end. And so whatever you, you're gonna do the, the two arrows, the two left arrows, and then whatever you write to the right of that, that's what's going to be the message. So notice I have, uh, let me open this up, notice I have debug log, that is the message that I've written here. And you can append more text to it. You can just say another piece of the log, right? And so this log, if I was to run it, then this will be debug log, another piece of the log, right? So everything is, it's uh, you can keep adding stuff. And if you have variables, you know, if I have int x, int x equals five, then you can also just come up here and put the x. So then this would be debug log, another piece of the log five, right? So any string or any of the primitives that it can convert nicely to a text, then you can just put it there, append it to it, and you can create your log to show perhaps a variable change or anything like that. All right, so using this is nothing crazy, right? We just, just use this and the message that you want to put, and that's it. Now, how do we set it up, right? Because right now, if you use this without setting up the file and everything, it does go somewhere. Qt does direct this message somewhere. I'm not, I don't exactly recall where, but they do go somewhere. And I think if you have a terminal, then this gets shown. Uh, however, sometimes we don't have that, right? We want to tell the program, the application, where we want these messages to go. So I have created, uh, well, not created, but I wanted to go to a file called mylog.log. Notice this doesn't have to be created. This will be created on runtime. I already have it because I wanted to show you in the beginning how they look. So let's go to the logger class. So I create a class called logger. And in here I have uh, included some of the classes that we're going to need. So we need QDebug, we need QFile, which is where we're going to store the, the contents of the log, the logging file. And then we need a hash that I use here in order to have the context name. So in this case, the context names are the severities of uh, the, the, again, the debug, info, warning, critical, and so on. So we have the variable for the log file. We have the variable for when we initialize the logger, because we initialize it at the beginning. And then we have a table. And then this table, again, I'll show you when we go to the CPP file. Then we have the function that initializes the logger, that cleans the logger, basically just closes the file in the end. And this is the function that handles the uh, actual log. So when you receive a log, this is what gets called. And I'll show you how to set that up. So now let's go to the logger CPP. So we include logger. 
We include queue date and time because again, I'm using the date and time here. And so we use this to format that. Uh, you don't need QDIR, uh, but you could use QDIR if you are trying to find a particular folder where you're trying to store the file. So QDIR, I, I, I've used this logger class in, in a project of mine. So I just left it as is and made a small changes. So I use QDIR there. And then queue file is we, we need it to open the file. I already have it actually up here, right? So you, we, we don't really need it here, but I'm just going to leave it there. So again, I modified this a little bit from a side project of mine. And then queue hash was also on the other one. And we need queue object because we use it to format some strings. So now the static variables, we have the log file, which in the beginning is just a null pointer. We have not initialized it. And then this table, we have the five severity. So it's debug, info, warning, critical, fatal. Notice that I have made these strings of the same size, and that's so that when I look at my log, they are properly aligned because I want these little pipes to be aligned. Just easier for readability. But you could make this anything. You could make it D-I-W-C-F, and instead here you'll get D-I-W-C-D-C-I, whatever, right? So it's up to you how you want to set that up. And here, this is part of Qt. So they already have defined in this enumeration what kind of message types they have. So they have debugs, info, warning, critical, fatal, the five severities that we have, right? And so that's it. So I have this table that I use in particular just for this so that I know what text I want to use depending on the type of message that I have. And I'll show you in a minute what I did. And then when we try to initialize the function, well, if I'm already initialized, I don't need to do it again. So what I need to do is I want to create the file. So I have a log file and I create a new file, right? And then I set the name of the file. In this case, I just want to do it in the in this directory. And it's going to be called my log that log. And I want to open the file with append attributes and the also it's a text file. Right? So it opens. Now the next thing that I want to do is this right here, this is how we redirect every log to go to that function. So I said here that this is the function that handles whenever a new log pops up, right? So in here, this is what this is basically how we redirect that. So we do queue install message handler, and then we pass the function that we want to use for that. In this case, is a function called message output of the logger class, and this is down here. We'll talk about it in a minute, right? So that's that's this is important. And then we resize the log file. I do this to clear the contents. So every time I run the application, it deletes the entire contents of the text file or the log file. If you would like it to append, then just comment this out or delete it. After that, I just set the is initialized flag to true to make sure that we don't repeat this again. Should we, for some reason, call that function again? And then the clean function is very simple. If the log file is not null, I just want to close the log file and delete the variable. Now here's the, 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 the fun stuff. The, here is where, like I said, this function is what handles what to do with that log that you raised in whatever your application you're using this. So in here, uh, we have three parameters. So the first parameter is the severity, right? So QT message type. This is the same thing as this five, right? So either debug, info, warning, critical, fatal. So this tells you, hey, what kind of log is this? The second one, the second variable or the second parameter tells you the context of this log. So you can get the class name, you can get the file where this log was written in, you can get the line number. So basically these things that I get here, the line, the the name of the file, the name of the function, and all these things, you get them from this variable, which is the context, Q message log context. And then the message itself, that's the last bit, this, this, this bit right here, right? So however long that is, it's just a string. It's a Q string that comes. Now this is the actual log, right? It looks intimidating, but don't let it be. It's actually quite simple. So I have a string, right? And it's uh, I called it log, and I'm going to format it properly using the tr function from the queue object class, right? So I have I have this six different entries, which is the six entries that I have here: one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And I separate them by a pipe, okay? And at the end, I add a carriage return so that I can separate each log by line. So the first argument within this formatted uh, string is I want the date and time, right? So I use queue date and time, current date time, and I turn it into a string, and I can pass the format that I want. So I said day, month, year, hour, minute, second. You can move these uh, letters around, and that would give you the format that you prefer. Right? I, I preferred it like this, and this is how I did it. 
Uh, you can go to the documentation of QDane time if you want to see more about that. And then the next thing is I want to know what type of severity this log is. So for that, I'm using my table, my Q hash table that I did up there. So I say, okay, from that table, tell me the value of this type. So if this was an info, right? So let's say this was an info severity. When I come here, well, an info severity is called info. So I want that string info to go here, right? So this would be info. That's this part that we have right here. And then the last, uh, not the last thing, the third thing is the line. So the line of code where this log is. And then the next thing that I want is the file. Now, by default, the context that file, this gives you the file where the log is. However, it gives you, I think it gives you the whole path. I don't want the whole path. I just want the name of the file. See, Qt logging that CPP. So I don't want, you know, the full path to where this file is located because then this log gets very long. And I know my code. I know where this file is. So I don't need it to tell me the full path. So what I did was I did this little, I call this function that is part of the QString class. And this function, what it does is what I'm telling it to do is I want you to keep the contents to the right of the rightmost slash. Basically just the name, right? So when you have a path like this, Right? I'm saying just keep the last piece and delete everything to the left from the last uh, slash. So that's what I did here. Right, So that just keeps the name of the file. And then this gives you the name of the function. So this would be context that function. However, this gives you the class. So, so this will be something like, like this. For example, it will give you logger colon colon context names. I don't want this. I don't want this logger because for the most part, this is object-oriented programming, and for the most part, the name of the file is also the name of the class, and I don't want this to get too long. So instead, of what I say is I do the same trick that I did here. I go and say, I just, I just want to cut to the part where I want the function name. So this is how I just get the pure function on debug rather than getting Qt login colon colon on debug. And if you have namespaces, I believe it also includes the namespaces, so that can get very long. So I do this to get rid of that chunk from the left. And the last thing that I have, the last argument is the actual message, right? The actual message, so I write it here, and that's it. So then I go and I write the log to the file, and then I flush the file to make sure that it shows as I run the application. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm debugging something sometimes, and I want to see what the contents of that is immediately. Kind of how I showed you in the beginning where I could just click info, see, it flushed it, now I can see it. So I flush it, and that's it. Right, so this is very simple. And then in order to get this working in my main, what I do is I do I call the logger that init or colon colon init. So I include the logger uh, file and I call the initiation function. Then I do my regular Qt, my regular Qt stuff where I create the application, my GUI window, and then I execute it, right? And I save the, the result of this execution so I can return it in the end. And before I return, I just call the clean so I can close the file and make sure that it closes before the application shuts down. All right, and that's it. Now, and you'll notice wh wherever you want to use this logging mechanism, you just include logger, and then you start calling this QDebug, QInfo, QWarning, QCritical, and you pass whatever message you want to the right of it, and that's it. That will appear on your log on real time as you as something happens you'll see it occur here like i've been showing you this whole time you know you can do a lot of them and then you come here and there they are right simple stuff now um just to discuss a little bit when would you want to use the different severities what well, debug is when you're debugging this is in particular as you're developing right this is this should not be part any debug log should not be part of the final product you should not just use debug whenever you're like, okay, I want to see what happens here. And so you just queue debug. Queue info could be part of the final product, but you want to just talk about perhaps a variable change, uh, I mean, a value change or the new connection. It depends, right? The application, it could be about anything. So any kind of information that you find useful, then you can log that. And then we have queue warning. So this, I like to do queue warning when there is an error that is part of the logic. So like, oh, you try to divide by zero and you can't do that. So that will be a queue warning, right? And then critical is more of a programming error. Now, obviously not a programming programming error because if there's a programming error, it's gonna crash. But I like to think of it as 
places where you think your code should never enter. Like if you do a null check and you say this should never be null, and one day it happens to be null because there's an error somewhere, then you will do a queue critical, and you know that that has to be fixed. That's a bug. That thing should never be null. So that would be a queue critical. Now let's talk about queue fatal. Queue fatal, like I said, it works different. And the reason why queue fatal works different is that queue fatal makes it terminate the application. So if I've come up here and I do, and I, let me scroll down here so you can see. If I do fatal, see I get error, debug error, and then it shows the error that I wanted, fatal log, right? But that, at this point, the application has crashed. So I just say abort and you know it closes, but I still get the log in my file before it closes. So queue fatal is when something you reached a part of your code when you're like, that's it, we're crashing. Um, just I just want to give you an error. I just want to tell you, hey man, you shouldn't have done that or this happened, this should have not happened. Here's a message um, and we have to restart the application. So this is why queue fatal does not get like several little double arrow thing. You only put the message that goes in here and that message will be shown and the application closes. Okay, so I'm gonna put this code on GitHub. Maybe you just want to get the logger class, both the header and the CPP, and you can just download them and use them. There's there's nothing fancy in here. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you found this video useful, if you don't mind, leave a like. If you're new to this channel, check out the channel, and if you like what you see, subscribe, be safe, and peace out.